Good afternoon, everyone. Hi there. Hi. How are you all oh, doing? Good morning or good afternoon. Good, thank you. How are you? Fine. Okay, uh, so I'm sure most of you don't, don't know who I am that much, or maybe you do. Anyway, uh, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Gary. I work for ATI. Uh, for me personally, I'm when I work with the instructional designers. I'm a de facto instructional designer myself. However, for the time being, I'm mostly relegated to helping out with uh, tech support and also giving presentations for the rest of you. So what I'm going to be doing today, I'm going to be teaching you how to use Portfolio. Now, Portfolio, and we want, I want to make this clear, and it's a professional website and then that you can use alongside LinkedIn. And they're similar in that the both of them, and then they allow to showcase your professional abilities, both for you and your students. But they have then different, different methods in which how they're actually used. So when you look at them, how they present, what they put emphasis on, they are and they are different from each other. You can definitely use both of them, then and definitely to your own benefit, to your students' benefit as well. So what I'm going to be doing first, and then I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to actually teach you how to use Portfolio. So I just need to get to share screen. Go to Google Chrome, and I'll click share. Okay, now first thing you wanna know about Portfolio, you can actually find it on the Blackboard page. You can go down to tools, you can click on Portfolio and you can access it there. From there, you have to do initial setup and they'll be ready for you to go after you have it ready. However, though, to let you know as well, I actually have two CSUSB accounts, both a student account and also a faculty account. So for me personally, I can't access it in Portfolio this way through this way because now my Blackboard is now registered to my faculty account. When my one I originally made was my student account. So for me, what I had to do, just so you can know as well, you can also go to the portfolio page itself. Then here you can click log in. You can go from there. So I'm just gonna so I'm just gonna do that. On this, does it matter if we sign in with like our first dot last name or our Coyote ID for that login? Um, that I'm not sure. I would honestly, I've never actually tried it differently like that. I would honestly suggest and just using it in a, the traditional way first. You can try the, the student ID first and see if that works. And if not, then, then do it the other way. Okay, so that was something that, uh, that has ever come up for me. So that's just something I just wanted to bring to your attention. Anyway, so this is the Portfolio McKenna page that you'll look at. If you already have Portfolio set up, it's going to look a little bit more, and it's going to look more developed like this. If you haven't done it so yet, it's going to look a little bit more bare. So for the time being, this is going to be the home page. We have the activity bar and the suggestions bar. I'm going to go into the suggestions bar later because it makes better sense to go after everything first because the suggestions bar has things here that I'll, I'll need to talk about first before we can actually get to this. So when you get here, you have an overview pin and bar then the activity stream right here and then the profile strength. When you come here in, into this, it's gonna show you an overview in, in, of your account, of your profile. You click on edit, this is where you can put your name down, you can add a tagline, your education, your current position as well, and you can even put a location. You can add more ones underneath them then to make in your account a little, a, little more, a little more substantiated. You can click change your picture to change in, in the picture here, your account to a different one. I chose this one. You can change the background photo as well, just to give it a different effect. Click on cancel here. So it'll show you overview, education, and work experience. Now here is the activity stream. Now what Portfolio is really good for is it's really good with showcasing projects. Now that's it's, and that is its real big specialty and stronghold for. So for here, you're gonna see a long list of being able to have all these different projects that are recommended to you. So here, again, the algorithm gives you done different activities all together and you can see them. You can see all their likes, everything of the sort, but if you want more detail into each project, you're going to click here. Now, here's an example of a student, Thaddeus uh, Neje. I don't know how to say his last name, forgive me. <laughs> but anyway, here he has a project. You can click, he titled, it's time the creative thinking project. With here, it has all the likes, all the views, when he posted it, and also category. All assignments or all products that are posted on here no, 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 are sorted by categories so you can find them better. Here he has all the files and everything he had and it's associated with this particular project. Here you can see, in this case, he had a lot of pictures. You can see them from here. 
He gives out a description talking about the background of this particular project. So you understand what exactly he's been uh, talking about. What is the, what is this project? What is it really all about? And from there as well too, and uh, if enabled, you can also download this file as well too. Performing will allow you to download someone else's work as well. Here's a full screen slide as well, so you can see everything as well. And also when it comes to portfolio as well, you have skills buttons. Now, whenever you have a project, they're all going to be associated with some skill, basically to substantiate, I have the skill, this project demonstrates that. In his case, since then he was a, it looks like he's a theater arts major, or at least this is a theater arts project. And the best skills are acting, acting training, applied theater, et cetera, et cetera. So you see these skills, they're saying these skills went into the development of this particular project. You also have taglines here as well too, so you can find particular projects according to that particular tag and all the people who've liked the project. What's also special here as well too, when you click on their project here, you can also click on connect and they'll send out basically like a friend request, something that you would also see like on LinkedIn. You can do that and they'll potentially, whether they accept or don't accept, and it'll go from there. You can also click a share button. The share button, if you've been connected Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, you can connect them and share these on those particular sites. I'll teach you how to link them later. You can also copy a link, a hyperlink, or you can embed the project as well too. You can click on here onto the person and you can see their particular profile. So in this way, and you can see them on a lot quicker. You can get an idea of who they are and what they're about. From there, you can see their portfolio, all their projects that they've, and they've already uploaded, all of their connections. You can connect with them here. And here you can, and here, this is also amazing thing as well too about, about portfolio. Everything that they, that they create can be turned into a PDF. You can save it as a PDF, you can send them a message, you can report their profile, or you can just block them. But that generally, however, that doesn't happen. There's usually not so much of a need for that, but occasionally it happens. Let me get back and let me get back to the main page. Okay, now we're back to the main page. We're gonna go over this and we're gonna go from, from left to right. Next, we'll go to Discover. Discover is been pretty much then the page where you can see all the different projects and then everyone one on portfolio has posted. You have them, however, with them to be, to be more organized, all the different projects and then that are created so far are all gonna, gonna be separated by category. And all these categories, we have expert and staff picks, you have here these that are actually more professional, basically by and by a particular field, activism and service, agriculture, and national resources, armed forces, and each one of these has their own subcategory. And that way makes it a lot easier to find the particular project that you're looking for if you already have one in mind. It gives you feature categories here, whatever the computer design or algorithm and it gives to you, expert picks, staff picks, and even trending projects. It just gives to you when which ones then that it decides to recommend. And the same thing too, you can click on one, exact same way I showed you in the main page activity feed, and you can still see the project. You can see the description. You can see who likes it, the tags, the skills that are associated with it, the person who uploaded it, a chance to connect with them, and also the ability to share in order to like it. I'll just move this out of the way because I have to move this out of here. Okay, so more or less than this is how it would look like. So if we were to click on say activism and service, here's everything so, so far in activism and service. Everything is all seen right here, popular skills and then that are seen here. So you can go on ahead and then just go through each kind. You click on particular skill, such as teamwork, for example, it'll give you particular projects that are associated with that particular skill then that are in the head that has already been posted down. So more, and they can also resort them by recently added, how many views they have, by how many likes they have as well. In this case, from highest to lowest. And then this just gives you a better idea of more or less how, how you can search through and navigate through all the different products people have posted. Now let's get to the jobs page. Uh, Julie, you have a question? I do, I'm curious. Um, when someone posts something, is it automatically public? Uh, no, it's not. I'm going to get into that when we get into the prime into the actual project page. I mean, into our profiles. I'll, I'll get into that when we get there. All right, now okay. I'm showing these by tabs, but I, I, I will get to that. Okay, so now this is the jobs page. Now, just like LinkedIn, you can actually go on ahead and apply for jobs here right on the main page. I will be honest though with him with you with this. And portfolio is good, but however, and I will be honest, LinkedIn actually has better advantages. 
Now, portfolio, it's good because, of course, you can find jobs, but the thing, what, what really makes it limits this just a little bit is it's not very good with location so much. So if I were, for example, let's say I'm bringing right now instructional designer, right? So let's just say I'm going to just say I try this instructional designer, but I really want to try and look for a specific location. Let's just say I want to put California. I, I want to put California. I do that. Unfortunately, however, though, it, it really go. It really wants specifically a city and a state, and it doesn't let me just go on specific state only. It doesn't do that very well. So, be, so because of that, if you don't really know where you want to look for, it could be a hassle just trying to look for jobs sometimes on here when you're trying to search for it this way. So if you really want to look for it with location, you're going to have to really know more or less the town that you actually want to search for. If you don't know the town, uh, it's, an, it's not going to do very well because it doesn't because it doesn't really focus more on a statewide level. It really tries to really micromanage how close it is to that. So my suggestion is just if you really don't, if you really don't have that much of a preference or you want to just see the whole general layout or you don't really know where there is a job, it's usually, it's usually best just, in, just to put the name and then of the position that you're looking for. Uh, I would ignore putting in a, a specific location for the time being, unless you know then specifically town-wise where you want to be. You can also type a specific company, type of industry, or type of job function to really filter down well on what kind of job that you want. You also have job types. You can distinguish between full-time, part-time, internship, or even a co-op. And also you can sort by as well the best match to men based on you and based on your qualifications, recently posted, and an expiration date. And then there you can click filter and it'll be separated. Now here, it already has given me some recommendations based on my instructional technology job so far. So I'm going to click on view job. This is what it'll look like whenever, whenever you look and at a new particular job in particular. This is what it'll show you. It'll give you the name, the company, where it's located when it was posted. Now you can click save It'll save, the, it'll save it onto your particular area and profile. I'll show you where that is later. So now you can have a list of everything that you want and that you've already saved for, what you're considering applying to. Here's the job description as well, the employment type, the job function, the deadline. Here's the description. And from here, you click on here to apply on their company website. Usually it'll redirect you to a different page so you can do this, you can do that. It'll give you related jobs right here on the side, just for your, just for your edification, or you can click share through Facebook, through Twitter, through LinkedIn. Now let's go to the notifications bar. Now notifications, you get notifications whenever certain criteria is met. And you can enable and disable what kind of notifications you'll actually receive in the options menu. And I'll get to that a little later. For me, it's been right now, since I'm not very active on portfolio at all, at this particular moment, I've only had very few, particularly in this particular case, connections and then people who I've already connected with or people who want to connect with me. So at this moment for me, there isn't really much, but for, but for other students, depending on what their preferences are, they may have much more. Here are the messages bar. You can go ahead and actually compose a message or you can reply back to, to someone else who sent you a message. I already have some already. Some of course being the starting a portfolio, a job or two recommendations from here before from my bachelor's degree. And then here you'll be able to just to see on here are them all at once. Now this is where I'm going to really get to the real bread and butter of portfolio. We're going to now go into our profile. Now the profile page is really, you're going to be able to showcase everything and everything that who you are and, and, and everything that you've done so far. So right here, this is going to be the main page. Whether if I click on this edit button, or if I click on this and on this pencil here or here, it's going to bring me to the exact same page right here. So I'll click on one of them. It's the exact same and then page then there on the earlier part of the activity page of the overview. Here I can change my picture, change the background photo, my name, tagline, my education, my position, and my location. I can add more, it's the exact same page. And in portfolio, a lot of the same and the functions take you to the, exact, to the exact same bar as well. Now from here, this gives me the overview again. I have my own right now two projects, 18 skills, two connections so far. What I can do as well, if I'm someone who has a lot more extracurricular activities under my belt, I can add athletics, badges, basically, and then they're specific to other websites. But however, though, if I had them, then, then they would display there if I connected them. Or publications. If I have published works, like research, essays, or articles, I can put them there as well, too. I have an introduction page where I give a tagline, talk a little bit about, about myself. I can add or attach a project here if I want. My work experience. So here I can click on it. I have a name, company, 
position, description, also a start date. As of right now, I have a current position. If I and if I disabled that, you know, and then I will be able to show when my end time was as well. But since I still currently work here, there's no need. Here are all the other jobs I've done so far. I was an avid tutor, a vetty intern, a sub for a little while, my education. Here I'm talking about my bachelor's and also my master's that I'm currently in progress with. Different courses I've done so far, I've just listed them out so far. I can also add, pro add projects if I want to do that. I'll, I'll teach you how to add projects in a little bit. Also different accomplishments. I was summa cum laude, so I put that down. And also different clubs or affiliations programs I've been a part of. And also my certifications, so I made sure to add my degree. That's always very important to do. And also any volunteer work I've done in the past. Now on the sidebar, this gives me the overview as I've already talked about, but also your profile strength. Based on how many things then the portfolio is already recommended that you do, it'll also display how strong that your profile actually is. And here are skills. Now, when it comes to skills, I can basically add any kind of skill I want and title it whatever I want. So at skill, I can just add whatever title I think is appropriate, put it down, it'll be saved here in the speed. So I can click see more, it's showing me more. So for here, I have, for example, paint, SketchUp rendering, editing, public speaking, analysis and writing. These are things and these are some of the skills I have. I have them down here, they're ready to go. Resume. Now here for this particular moment, I don't really have it enabled so much, but over here, this is basically to end it to, and basically to allow people to see my resume or to hide it. For the time being, I have it disabled because for this moment in time, there isn't really need for employers to see me at this moment in time. However, though, that might be something you might wanna change later. And also here, these are also suggestions, people that you may or may not know, depending on your major or any other connections you may have. You can click on here to add them if it's someone you absolutely want to add, or you can click see more, then just a few more recommendations, or you can click search and find them this way. Now, this is where I'm gonna teach you how to actually build out your portfolio. You click on the portfolio page, here are a few examples of some of the things I've already uploaded. One of them, of course, I added was my bachelor's, just what's there. This is another one of my projects that I added here as well. This was a writing, and a writing example that I did back in English 240, but instead I'm going to click on add new project. Now, when I get on here and I'm going to go on ahead and add more, and then more project stone to my, to, my, uh, to my profile, first I had to add a title. So I'm not gonna do that right here because I have another one in the works for you. Then upload files. Their portfolio will take a lot, a lot of different kinds of file types. Examples, PDF, doc, docx, XLS, PowerPoint, MP3s, it'll take MP4s. And then there, and there's a lot that'll take. You can paste a link from YouTube or Prezi or any other website as well too. So that way you can see them that way. And you also have more options. More options basically is a way to connect you to your cloud-based services or even then into your social media. So Google Drive, your Instagram, your Facebook, your Google Photos, your Gmail, a web search in general as well too, Dropbox, Box or OneDrive. If you have access to all of them, you can go on ahead and add them, but you'll have to sign into them in order to basically make sure portfolio can get into them. I don't really have an Instagram or a Facebook, so I'm not gonna show any of that particular showcasing. And I have other things from Google Drive, Google Photos, you just connect to them and you should be able to access and you should be able to show them from there. From there, you need to type in a category. That way it's in and people can go on ahead and find it better. Whenever someone else goes in a portfolio and you want them to see your work, just browsing through it, a category really helps them be, be, be able to narrow down what exactly in this project, what exactly it's for. You give your description here and here are your tool and here are your skills, tools, your software. I already showed you some of the skills you've already done on the other page so far, but you can add more of those skills directly into this page right here. It gives you some recommendations, just you know, auto-generated. You don't have to use them. You can if you want, but you don't have to. You can search for a skill. You can add and just put them there. And what that'll do is that you can have, when you have a skill associated with a project, it helps build out the fact that you have that skill intact. You all, if you worked with someone on a particular group, you can, you can tag them. If they're on portfolio, you can search for them. And there it'll show that they had a hand in that particular work as well. And of course, here are tags, ways in which it may be, you know, hashtags, where you can basically easier find and then whatever project you have in mind. Now, this is where I'm going to talk about when it comes to uh, and then the privacy. Every individual project, you can go through here through settings. This is the visibility. You have the public, anyone on or off portfolio can see this project. 
portfolio members, only those on portfolio can see this project. Connections, only your connections, or it's on, or only you. It's on portfolio, but no one else can see it. And so you can also allow anyone on portfolio to comment on the project. I have allowed that so far. So that's what exactly what it would look like. However, though, I have something else in the works to show you because I want to show you what this would look like otherwise if I, if I said chose to click save Lynn do later. This is a project that I was working on so far, one of my projects so far in my instructional design classes. What I did, I created a SketchUp video. I created an actual 3D space, then I created the video, I put it on YouTube, I pasted it and I found it, I took the link and I pasted it right to it. So you click on it, this is more or less one of what I created so far. I have, the I have a title, the caption, and the URL to it. I haven't put my category down yet. I haven't put, I haven't finished my full on description. I have put on one of the skills so far. I didn't have any teammates though. I didn't set any tags just yet. But what I did was however though, back when I was first doing it, I clicked finish later. When I clicked finish later, it stayed here in the pending draft page right here. This is, this is just that way that in case you have a project started but you haven't finished finalizing the description yet, It'll and everything you haven't finalized will stay in this particular section of your page. Now let's go to connections. Now connections here, it shows an entire list of all the people who you sent friend requests to, all the ones and then they've sent requests to you from, and all, all those you've accepted. Uh, Sia Raman, for example, she sent, she sent me a friend request. I haven't accepted it. These are some I have. Sarah Hoover, Danielle Lockhart, these are some students that I sent friend requests to. They didn't, they just haven't never responded back. Jonathan Grandorf, on the other hand, is a student on the other hand, who I actually have, I sent requests to and he accepted. Now we're connected. We can click remove if we want, but that's not something I'm going to do. The pending button here just shows me on their end, I hear that I sent it to them, they just had to make a decision. But this pending is a little bit different. Since then, since these are those I sent out to, this is one I received from. So here I can click accept or deny. Then from there, and it'll be updated as such. It can only show so many pages at once, but I can click load more and here are just a few more here and that I sent out friend request to as well. Now this is, now I can click show here, all accepted, pending, requested or referrals. This, uh, and now I can, I can sort them all down by my particular kind of uh, filter, or I can sort them by their profile strength, recent, popular, alphabetical. Now, this is something very interesting here as well. What I can do if I want someone to see my, to see my actual portfolio page, I have my own particular hyperlink to it right here. I can click that and copy it to key and to get into the clipboard. Then through an email, wherever I want, I can send to someone else. They can say, here's my profile. How would you take a look at it? Now this here is also really cool as well. When it comes to portfolio, you can actually save your work as a PDF. It'll actually turn it in, into a resume for you. I can do a summary, a one page summary of the profile or a full profile summary. So let's just try full profile. It's being prepared. I click on it and here an actual portfolio is being generated for me. It's all done then through algorithms. So in, it may or may not be the best kind you may want but however, it is an, an option for you. It does and it does do a pretty good job for the most part. But however though, I think in, on, in, all, in all honesty, Building your own would be a little bit better than that you can fine tune it. But however, for the basic stuff, and then for your, for your basic qualifications, this is a really good starter resume. Now from here, I'm going to go into the suggestions page because the suggestions page just basically takes you back to the home page. Now on the second bar, suggestions. Based on your activity, you will get different companies you can follow, jobs you might be interested in, projects from people at your school, skills in your major and top ranking people and top ranking people in your school as well. This just gives you an overview of different things, the people, projects, companies to follow and jobs. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to show you now back in the, in, in the, in the me page, I'm going to now go to my jobs. The field service technician, that was a job I saved. Now, with this, all the saved jobs that I have right here, they'll all appear right here. Active jobs or expired jobs, everything here that you've ever saved will, will appear in this feed. Now jobs I've applied to, I haven't applied to any jobs here, but if I did, they would appear here as well. If I got hired from a job, I can say, I can say tell us you got hired. Here, you basically say, I have this new job. It'll, it'll show I've been hired and that'll show on, on the feed for other people. And in any case, any of them follow me. 
Now let's go to settings. Now settings are here, they basically even in and basically to fine tune other things you might need to do. Here you can change your profile picture, a different cover image, your username, your first name, your last name, your birthday, your tagline, your phone number, your gender. Here, if you also have a Facebook, a Twitter, or an Instagram, or a LinkedIn, you can get your own print, your own particular URLs, copy them and paste them here, so that way anyone can take a look here and they can go straight directly to those pages. GitHub as well, a personal URL, URL as well too, in case you have something outside of those particular domains. You can click, I'm currently looking for an internship or I'm currently looking for a job. I have them there, I haven't changed them, but I can disable them if I want to. Email, I can change what particular email I want to use primary for portfolio and also any backups that I have. So I can add more here for recovery. I can change my password here. I can add a location based on where I want, based on my job or, any, or anything of the sort. Notifications, as I showed you here before, I had very little notifications of what I've had so far just because I haven't been that active. But however, though, there's so many different kinds of notifications you can get. We won't get into all of them, and here's a little bit of an overview. Email when me in jobs. Email me when I apply for a job. An employer wants to meet, wants me to apply for a job. Email me when I get in, when I link my LinkedIn account, when I join a network is approved. Someone accepts my connection. Okay. Also, here email me for my portfolio when I get imported badge from Credly. Uh, I enter a challenge. My project is viewed more than 50 times, et cetera, et cetera. My profile, I change the email in my profile. Someone sends me a message, tasks. When you're done, you click update notifications. There are just so many here. We're not gonna get into all of them at this particular moment in time. This is just like the overview. But when you're done, click update notifications. Blocked accounts. If there's anyone I didn't know I didn't want to connect with, I would click I would click them and I can actually block them. They would all appear here. But I haven't done that, so there's really no need. Privacy, only allow people I'm connected with to view my profile. I have that disabled. Prevent employers from contacting me and finding my profile. For the time being, that's already set there by default. Or actually, maybe it isn't, it's been a while. But for the time being, you can enable or disable that. For me, I don't need any employers looking at me right now for the time being. So for the time being, I have that locked down. Website data collection, cookies, I have that here. You can also download a copy of your portfolio information at any time in a few steps. That's more of an advanced setting. That's something I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna get into right now though. Security clearances. They actually have security clearances here. If you, any by chance, and work for the federal government or anything of the sort, and you wanna sh and display what kind of security clearances you have, you can post them here as well. Uh, however, that's probably not gonna be most people, but uh, that, that is an option. Now this is where I'm gonna show you how you can, can connect into other particular devices as well. Here you can start to provide import projects and badges from, from Credly or Badger. If you have an account with them and you have that active, you can connect them together and you can go from there. I don't have Credly or Badger, so that's not something I can show you right now. Now connected apps, same thing here. If you have projects with them, you can connect them together and they'll be linked together. Badger, you can automatically import projects. Credly, the same thing. Facebook, share your projects and automatically import profile data. LinkedIn, Twitter, Google. You have those, you can connect to them and they'll, come in and they'll connect together. So projects, for example, in between LinkedIn and Portfolio, they should be able to be shared between each other. Same thing goes for only everything else here as well. Now, also just for a quick shortcut, you can just click on new project here as well too. And once more, you'll be in, you'll be prompted with creating your own particular project you want to upload. And then you can, you can show it to everyone else. And in this way, you don't actually have to go to your, to your profile every single time. What Portfolio and Portfolio tries to do it tries to give you shortcuts, even if it takes you to a different page, just so that way then the, um, the experience is a little bit more seamless. And um, that's everything I have so far for all of you. Do anybody do you have any more, any more questions? Donna Gotch from Communication Studies. Thank you so much for um, providing this webinar for us. I have to admit, I attended because of the Department of Communication Studies mm -hmm. um, is revamping or redesigning our assessment for all of our majors. Mm -hmm. And this is the first semester that we are required as faculty to 
have our students in our classes, in some mm -hmm. of our classes at least, um, to create a portfolio account and to upload a certain assignment via mm -hmm. Blackboard to Portfolio. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit, that's why I attended uh, your webinar to find out how our students can do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if you can just take us through, if there's time for how do I direct my students to create this portfolio account, submit an assignment on this account and so forth. Okay. Gary, well, Gary hi, can I show them that part? Because yeah, I you know can, you, yeah. don't have a, you don't have access Thank to you. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you can definitely do that part. Let me, uh, let me just stop and let me just stop the sharing and I'll give that to you. I'll give it to you, Liz. Okay, Liz is another one of our instructional designers. She and she works in and we work together on, on different instructional projects. She, she can now help you and help you with that part and definitely as well. And um, because as of right now, as far as it stands, as far as I'm aware of, and in Blackboard and, and, and Portfolio can integrate with each other. However, though, as in, as of this particular moment in time, I don't think we have that enabled. I'm just not entirely sure that, and, and that if we have, we just haven't actually activated it yet, or if it was just because that, and, or we didn't, or we don't have the particular license for it. That's just the so only thing. I think it's because of the way you started your account. Um, there's an error to it, but the way you will walk your students through it, it's as simple as they go to tools in their Blackboard. They log into Blackboard normally. They go into tools and they hit the portfolio. Now mm -hmm. you have to be clear because this portfolio is within uh, Blackboard, but this is just something that lives in the course. Mm -hmm. um, I think about this section as just an assignment that you create in Blackboard. So ha they have to select the one with the color, which mm -hmm. is blue. Mm -hmm. Once they hear, uh, that once they're here, they will get to this page. Um, and here they can start by selecting a new project or they can select on, on their name here and it will take them directly into Blackboard. If they haven't created an account uh, already, this will automatically, automatically create an account for them. So I'm gonna click on my name um, and here it takes them to the same a similar place or where Gary started started. Uh, once again, uh, here, uh, if they submit a resume, it will auto populate some of the content in here portfolios will be here they can share one of the key things with the tags is the tags are usually provided by your college so it's easier for them to 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 find so that's one of the things. Um, and that is pretty much it. Uh, just remember, go to Blackboard, select tools, go to portfolio, the color one. That's how I like to tell them because <laughs> they forget. And from here, they can start their account by creating a new project or just logging into it. If they create a new project for him from here, it takes him to this page which Gary kind of went through. Mm -hmm. um, here they can upload the files, any kind, categories, um, skills and softwares, and teammates. There was sometimes the way I like to sell it to the students is this is not just another assignment for them. It's something that can be beneficial to them because um, a lot of companies are looking for, well, you have to have three years experience on this thing. And then that gets a little overwhelming, especially when you're starting out. But gaining that experience in a classroom, they still gain that, they still have that experience. So by creating a portfolio, they're not only uh, using it for class, but they can actually use it to show their employers, you know what, I can actually have this skill. I will show you what I did and it, 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 they can show their proficiency in that subject. So that's how I love to sell portfolio to them because they can use it for, um, for their careers. There is also an application that you can download on your phone. Um, and uh, I love that because if they're out somewhere, they meet someone important in the middle of a conversation, they can quickly bring out their phone and show their work. Um, so that's a couple of things how I like selling this to students and it's just a great, great tool. 
Elizabeth, other- thank you very, very much. I just have one quick question for you. How long do students like once they graduate, how long do they have access to this account? They will always have access to this account. It's kind of like a LinkedIn. Oh, okay. um, and if this connects to LinkedIn as well, the one yeah. thing is after they graduate, I would recommend them going to um, their account and they can change their email address and they can adjust their password from um, the settings option. So they always have access to this. It's kind of like their own personal LinkedIn with their projects in it. Is the, is the goal for our campus to have all of our students to have one of, uh, have a portfolio page? Is that like a goal for the university or? Um, I believe so. Um, yeah. Do not quote me on that. No, 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 I, I, I know, think... I'm just curious. <laughs> I won't tell anyone when I talk to you, Elizabeth. <laughs> I believe so, uh, but I think the key is that uh, there's another aspect that um, eventually we can connect the uh, goals to the um, the program objectives with the class objectives, and then we can link this little section so everything is easily trackable and everything is is is. Um, easily assess, you know, did we meet this goal? So, so yes, eventually. Thank you. Very I believe nice. so. Yeah. Truth of the matter Unless, is too, yeah, truth of the matter is true, as we, I already kind of lightly touched upon, portfolio can integrate with Blackboard as well too, because beyond this way before, we don't have that enabled so far in our yeah. Blackboard yet. I, I don't think, I just don't know if, it, if we have, if we can do it, we just don't have it activated or if we, or if we need an extra light list, do you know, if, do you know if we can do it right now? We just need to activate it or we don't uh, have a license for it. I could not give you a, an adequate answer to that one. Um, we do have some sort of license um, that is being used at a higher level, but um, I don't know about the integration with Blackboard. Joanna, would you happen to know the answer to that? I believe the answer is that we don't have the integration license. That is correct. Okay, point. yeah. Yeah, if we did, you'll be able, there would be a link on the Blackboard page where, and where you can and actually <laughs> turn it in through there. Uh, Alicia, right. question. Hi, this is Alicia. Hi, everybody. Um, I had a question on your experience. Is it better to do you recommend that the students create a project labeled like their class, or do you recommend that they create a project when they make a new one that's a particular project and then just direct the faculty member to that project? Uh, personally, what I would recommend, at least for the time being, since we don't have an, an exact specific integration with Blackboard in the way I've described it, I would actually suggest put the name of the course probably in there as well, too, just for extra clarity so the professor can find it that way. I think the key with that one, too, is the description of the project when mm -hmm. they have to contextualize what the, contextualize what the project is about. Mm -hmm. And then within that, they can put it. And also the tags. The hashtags that you use, um, those are going to be key in being to locate what course that belongs to and to what learning of, uh, outcome or um, it belongs to. And, and students should also be willing okay. to share their project as well, too, as well, too, no, 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 via the URL link as well. And then that, that way it can be easier, too, for anyone, you know, and for the professors to actually see it as well. And we've used it a little bit this um, semester, but we were doing it directly from Blackboard where we um, assigned an assignment that linked and said it was a portfolio project. Mm -hmm. Is that the way that you suggest or should we not be doing it that way and just having them um, upload a link directly? I'm not sure about the question. Um, I think and I, I think what it was is that you know, whenever they, they would make a project in portfolio, but then they would but they would upload the link in Blackboard. You can still well, as the faculty member, we would break a, an assignment in Blackboard, but when it asks you at the bottom of the assignment, it gives you the assignment submission options. Mm -hmm. We would check the part that says it's a portfolio um, project. And I just want to make sure that that's okay. If it's a portfolio project, that might be the one that's already integrated in the Blackboard already, so they're not the same. I mean, we need to do a double check to make sure uh, for, we have that, you know, but we have to make sure to make sure we're talking about the same thing. But as of right now, okay. portfolio doesn't integrate that way. Yeah, we're, we're you speaking of using this link? I'm, I don't, I'm not 100% sure which one it goes to. I just know that when we're in 
I can't recall exactly how, because it was at the very beginning of the semester when I went through and figured out how they would go into it. But when the faculty member creates the assignment, so when they're in their course and they create their assignment, there's an option at the bottom of the assignment creation that has submission options. And one of the options is portfolio. Yes, that, so that instead one. Instead of just having it be a document. That one would take him to this one yeah, on top. Portfolio. So that one goes that portfolio. one. Okay. Yeah, they're no. not the same. Okay, Dr. Grant, you okay. got a question as well, too? Yes. So, and, and it relates to this. So, probably, what is the simplest way you would recommend for a faculty to integrate a portfolio assignment into Blackboard? I'm thinking you just create an assignment and then the students submit the link. And that, that, the, the project, being, that's right? honestly what I recommend as well, too. Okay, thank you. You can also create it as a discussion board if you want them each other to give feedback, but that is certainly okay. up to you. The The link will suffice. Okay, thank you. Do you have any other questions? Yes, I have a question. Thank you for all of the helpful information today. In regards to the tags, um, is there like a general format that we should use for our individual programs or what is your suggestion on that? Mm, they, they, well, the tags, as Liz said, they're more or less generated or kind of already suggested by, by Cal State already. I, my suggestion would be for the time being is that you should probably decide on what would be some of the best uh, tags you, and, and you should go by in your department broadly and then, then tell students to use those particular tags, whatever products that you have. So, so that way you can narrow and narrow it down. Great, thank you. You're welcome. You know, when it comes to tags, the department will be a great um, resource for those. Because they will be the ones that will have to look at them up to make sure all the students are doing their work. So, or the outcomes match. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Hi, Felicia again. I was just wondering, um, do you guys have plans on doing any like quick how to documents or anything that we can distribute to the students? We have. I know there are some portfolio videos and things, but trust me, they're not that useful <laughs> on their website. They're not great. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we can develop some, absolutely. Uh, we, I created a video um, that uh, Gary can send everybody else afterwards. Uh, it just goes directly to the point of what students need to do and also can be useful for faculty as well. I'm pretty sure we can share that with everyone. Um, and it's not a long video. Thank you. Is there anything else? Any other questions or concerns? I have another question going back to privacy. Okay. I'm curious if there are concerns that we need to be considering as a department for having students share, requiring students to share their work publicly in order for us to be able to find it. What I would probably suggest them probably just from an extra safety precaution, make sure as, as you as the instructor, you also have you also have a portfolio account as well too. So then what you can what you can probably one other thing you can potentially do is that you can form connections and you know, with your students via portfolio and then there you can then you can share the project end to that particular connection, meaning they can share it to you. Hmm. Okay. Isn't there a way in the settings that you can specify that like only the person with that link has access to it? So you don't have it really shared publicly, but it's just particularly to the faculty member. I thought there was a way to do that. Uh, let me share that with uh, everybody. So when, um, where is it? We go to edit and I hear here. Like here. Thank you, Gary. Um, here we can just have it so only our connections can see the particular project, so they don't have to make it public. Um, 
So I would suggest this one, this option. Mm -hmm. um, you would need your own employment account and, and a connection with your students, but and um, but when that's done, then you can share it with them you know, the URL afterwards. So they'll still have access. So you'll still have access to it. Mm -hmm. Or even even just even portfolio members as well too. But I would suggest probably the connections as well. And one of the other things that helps when it comes to this is this is not so much open to the public. This is only people who have. Well, as you can see, you can open it to the public, but mostly um, is other members who have portfolios and usually those are college students or we they, they do have some companies that um, have access to this uh, when they're looking for employees. So thank you. Uh, sorry, um, we can probably research that a little bit more and um, but at this point that's the best answer I can give you. I'm sorry about that. No, that's okay. Thank you. I think I'm thinking very specifically about like how we're using it in the department and what questions we might get from students. And so I figured since we're here, I would just ask you how you would answer those. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And I think um, we do have an administrator in the back end that can get access to certain tags, that, even if um, um, for the projects for students. So. They can have it uh, just connections and, and and that will probably be the best way to do it on that one. Okay, thank you. Elizabeth, this is Donna again, sorry. Do you have any suggestions for, I'm embarrassed to ask this, to motivate our students to do this? And the reason I'm asking that is because if we're not offering any sort of incentive, whether it's a grade in our class or extra credit points or whatever the case may be, what is the incentive for, for I've got 175 students, what is the incentive for them to upload the assignment or even create a portfolio site for themselves? Um, the incentive that I think I don't know if it works or if it's successful, but this right. is a great opportunity to showcase what you can do, exactly. to emphasize the job, um, to help you find a job, because ultimately that's what students need or want uh, out of college. And this is a great um, rest, uh, great a place. Repository, great repository. Yes. A great repository really and to professionally show uh, everything you can do, who you are professionally. So and just I, the idea of you being able to be and show out everything you have, build a community and things like that, it's absolutely a really great tool. Yeah, I, I mean, that LinkedIn can do some things better, but where this and but where portfolio shines is really your pro, your profile building and all your project showcasing. Yeah. Students are already pretty much used to sharing with social media, um, sure. TikTok and all that stuff. So this is just another way for them to do it professionally and share what they can do. Uh, that's the best way for me to, to kind of try to sell it for them. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I, I don't see any other way, but it's like you want a job. This is how you can show what you can do. <laughs> uh, you don't have the five years experience, but you do gain some experience in class with the projects. Um, if you add who you, you collaborated with in some of those projects, mm -hmm. that shows that you can work with others well and the kind of projects you can come up as a group. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the best selling point to this thing. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Thank you. You're welcome. Well, um, did we answer everybody's questions? Um, I know some of you didn't want to share publicly. I think we went over that. Um, um, yeah. Students well, we'll have- get, We'll get the recording sent out for those who are asking, by the way. We'll, we'll take care of that in a little bit and we'll have, make sure you have access to that. Great, yeah. thank you so much. If, uh, feel free to add that recording to your classroom. It's just an easy, quick step-by-step. -step, and I do mention some of those uh, options of why is they should do it, just to kind of share their, their skills in the job market. Um, 
Thank you for your time. You're welcome. I feel like you're getting all of my, um, we've been thrown into technology nerves at this point. I'm like, oh my gosh, another thing. I'm, I'm not as proficient as te at technology, but thank you for being patient with our questions. No, not at all. Um, I think that the video that we're going to share with you guys will, uh, will answer a lot of those questions and is easy to follow. Uh, if you do need any help, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, uh, I think your students will um, can reach out to ITS um, for help as well. Awesome. So, any other questions um, that we can answer? Because I think we are getting. We have ten minutes left. Thank you for having me, Gary. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. And, and then the ending, you helped me out there a little bit with the ending. I had then the majority of portfolio down, but that little extra tip in there really hadn't helped out. So. Yeah, you're welcome. Sometimes um, when we have a uh, student accounts and faculty accounts, they mm -hmm. yeah. they overlap. I, I, prefaced, I prefaced that at the beginning of this recording to make yeah. sure I wouldn't need that. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stop this recording now and then uh, let's just then let's talk after the theme just so we can make sure we have everything squared away, okay? All right. Okay.